We regularly, in chemistry, we use thermos flasks, you know, like, like you keep for coffee or soup. Um, and we use thermos flasks to keep things cold. And what we thought we'd show you today is how uh, some chemistry of one of the elements is used to make a thermos flask. So Neil is taking one apart. What we can see here is the inside of a thermos flask. So this is just a glass envelope which we connect to a pump and we suck out all the atmosphere to make a vacuum inside. And we also silver the inside of that glass just so that we can see, make it nice, nice and pretty, such that the, any heat that is in there is bounced back in, reflected back in, okay? So we thought we'd show you how we'd silver some glass because that's pretty cool chemistry of silver. So um, the starting material for this is um, our favorite silver nitrate. What we need to do first is make a salt, make a salt solution. And um, we've done that by dissolving silver nitrate in some deionized water. The next step for this reaction is really to make that silver a little bit more reactive. And we're gonna do that by reacting it with ammonia solution. As we add the ammonia, we should see a chemical change really quickly. So I add a few more drops, you can see these big clouds of a new product coming. This is actually silver hydroxide and it's the silver reacting with hydroxide within the aqueous ammonia solution that we're putting in, which makes this new product, or this really nice brownie sort of precipitate. So if we give that a bit of a mix, we can make that complete reaction. It's quite nice in itself, and it's a really nice chemical reaction to watch, but it's not really what we need, okay? So what we need to do now is react that further by adding more ammonia, so the ammonia, the NH3, displaces the hydroxide, it kicks it out, a bit like a competition reaction. These are very delicate equilibrium reactions, so they go very, very quickly. We've reacted all of that silver hydroxide and made the silver diamine compound that we need. Now all we need to do is put it into the flask that we want to make silver and add something that'll reduce it. And we're going to use a sugar solution. And we thought we'd silver this flask today. So it's a nice round bottom flask. We can pour the silver in solution in. This is a solution of sugar, similar to the sugar that we put in a cup of tea or coffee that we've made with deionized water. And we're now going to add it to the silvering solution and now warm the solution to about 70 degrees. And we're going to do that using the water bath. So there's our sugar and our silvering solution. And we'll leave that a few moments and we'll come back and see what happens. Okay, so we've been doing all sorts of experiments in the lab today, and it's about an hour since we set up the, the silver mirroring experiment. So I think what we ought to do now is go back and have a look and see if it's worked. And we're just gonna lift it up now out of the bath. And we can see almost instantaneously that the solution itself has gone all gray, which tells me that something's happened to the silver. Now, I'm gonna now rotate the flask and I think you can see there's a really nice mirror which has been formed on the bottom of that flask. So we've reduced the silver from the salt, the diamine complex, to silver zero or metallic silver which has then precipitated and covered the glass. Perfect mirror that we formed on the, on the, on the, the inside of this flask. So now what we need to do is we need to remove the rest of the excess solution and wash it with water which will then stabilize the mirror so that we've mirrored the vessel. So we've washed it with water because the, the byproducts in this reaction could contain quite energetic salts of silver and, and we don't want any energetic reactions in our nice new flask. Sam. Good luck. Oh, that's beautiful. He made him here. Yeah. There we go. His royal stigness. <laughs>